You know, while I was growing up, I was bigger than most of the uh, other kids my age. And so the older, there was a, you know, one or two that were bullies and they were older than I was and they, they liked to uh, push me around. Well, anyway, I learned at an early age how to defend myself physically. And when I got older, I defended those that were weaker. And you had to learn how to do that, not only physically defend yourself, but you had to defend yourself spiritually. And this recent situation with the preacher has brought up some old memories, one from over 20 years ago when I was involved in a local church family. And uh, we had four deacons and three of them loved me. And that's pretty good because, you know, old Duke's hard to love. But anyway, I love them too, even the fourth one. But I was spiritually immature. And there's some similarities in this except the fact that I'm not spiritually immature any longer. And I've learned to defend myself. I'm on a solid foundation. And it's a, a shame to bring uh, conflict into the church unnecessarily, but there's times you should defend yourself. And I left that church and I didn't tell my deacons and my church family why. And the fact was they should have known and the preacher was lying from the pulpit. And at that time, I, I couldn't tolerate it. And I didn't want to cause any conflict. And I wasn't spiritually mature enough to handle it. And so I'm doing these lessons so that you'll learn yourself uh, how to identify and relate to problems with other Christians and handle it properly. I'm not, I'm not here to condemn any man, especially a brother. We can all fall into sin, and we need to, when somebody sins against me, I need to be willing to restore them. And the world, you know, they look at us and It brings shame on us. And unfortunately, I told this preacher, you know, that if he took this public without lining it out with me, that it would bring shame on him. And it has. Uh, this whole thing's backfired, and he became the accuser. And then he went back to his congregation and and acted as though he was uh, being persecuted for being a guardian of the truth and that's not so and he might think it's over with but it's not because I'm going to defend myself he's made some strong accusations against me that I haven't talked about yet. And uh, I don't want you, when this happens to you, I don't want your faith shaking. We need to be in the Word of God and we need to study every chance we get so we can grow and be able to stand on that firm foundation. But, uh, there's probably several things that this man has against me, and I know one of them is my teachings on the different translations. 
and the man's mocked me. I think it's on his page right now where he mocks me. And I'll quote him. Duke, you think God has called you to fix all that is wrong with the church, starting with all the evil, non-King James Bible readers. You should fix yourself first. He, he caused me to doubt myself, and the Lord showed me right then. I'm not searching for problems. He's revealing himself to me. And we all want to be, uh, when we say things, we want to be uh, we want people to be accurate to what we had said. We don't like to be misquoted, and God doesn't either. And I've proven to you by fact that the King James Bible is the standard. These other translations, they're not of the same text. And if you don't think Satan is working against God's word, you're wrong. And we need to be aware of what he's doing. We see what Satan is doing in the world. And these lessons that God is revealing to me that I'm sharing with you are about words. And this preacher man fell into that trap. And he, he is the proof of what I'm teaching you. And when uh, he goes on to talk about the NASB is a better translation because it translates master into teacher. And see, this is probably a better word. And this is what I believed for so long about the translation that they were just uh, more modern words than what we use today. But that is not where it stops. And the Lord revealed to me after I read all this, 1 Corinthians 1.18 in the King James Bible. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that perish, but unto us which are saved, which are saved. None of the other translations say that. They say the they say being saved. There's no such thing as being saved. You either saved or you aren't. It's at the moment you believe. But the, these modern translations are blurring the lines of salvation. They are. Uh, they had to come up with another teaching when their Bibles say being saved. That leads people to think that they have to work for their salvation, that they're working towards salvation. They're being saved, and that's not true. You either are or you aren't. You either in the boat or you in the water. You know, The Bible teaches sanctification, and that's where the, the lessons are in sanctification. You don't blur the lines of salvation. People know, need to know whether they're saved or not. And this is a serious misrepresentation of the scriptures because uh, we know from other scriptures that there's a point in time when we're saved. And so it goes against the scriptures itself. So we know that these other translations aren't accurate. But I'm going to carry you along. And uh, 
I'm going to analyze this problem since this preacher man made this public. I'm going to, uh, we're going to analyze this problem and we're going to see how, how it all happened and how it, how it came down. And I want to do it with love because this man, he, you know, he's supposed to be saved, but I don't ever, I've never seen anyone treat a, a brother like that. And I don't know all the problems, there are probably several that he has with me, but his vision became clouded. And all he has done is talk about my problem, your problem, your problem is, your problem is. And he hasn't caused me to stumble because I'm grounded in the faith. I am standing on the rock and I want every other Christian to be able to do that too. When you uh, are being suffering from persecution from a church member or anybody else, you need to be able to stand. And uh, so we'll be talking about it some more. And uh, I love all y'all with a Christian love. Lord bless you.